Hey, Bob, I might throw you something. Right, here we go. joining us today for Master Coaches Wednesday Weekly Buzz and our after show Buzz Reaction. I'm Ruth Nelson joined by Hall of Famers Mick Haley, Bob Bertucci, and Brian Gimilero bringing you the most current issues and trends in volleyball. Our weekly news show has leaders in our sport provide their perspective on the questions that are asked along with the discussions on topics that are current and ones that are affecting all of us. Our news flash: market price is a marketplace that connects brands and athletes has raised a 3 million seed round as competition grows to meet new NIL opportunities. They currently have 1300 athletes and over 300 brands on their platform. Launched in 2020, Market Price is one of the many startups targeting the 500,000 college athletes. And it is estimated that there are already 18 companies focused on NIL partnerships. Jackson Lewis PC launches new Title IX training series with seven modules to help higher education institutions meet annual Title IX team training obligations and promote best practices in addressing sexual misconduct of allegations. Check it out. And recently, their Lead One Forum had an interview with Executive Director NFHS, that's National Federation High School, and North Carolina Chapel Hill soccer head coach and Alexandria City Public School Director of Athletics on guess what, NIL and the impact on high school sports participation. Registration is open for 2021 ABCA convention in Columbus, Ohio, December 15th to the 18th. Jump over to abcaconvention.org to register. Today, our guests come from two conferences, guess what, that are not part of the Power Five. However, both of these head coaches are going to share valuable information how they have been building their programs in order to be recognized in the top 20 ranking, top of their conference, and how to maintain these rankings. Before we head over to Austin, Texas, with former Olympic coach Mick Haley, who will introduce our guest today, let's not forget to reach out to those colleges and universities that need our support during the recovery of Hurricane Ida. Now to you, Mick. Thank you, Ruth. It's uh, really a pleasure to introduce Molly Ivey, uh, Alve, excuse me, Molly, Molly Alve, a head coach at the University of Cincinnati, who's just been doing a, a bang up job at directing that program and six year coach Tim Nolan at Grand Canyon University, who's uh, got uh, the same uh, idea and building a program as Molly trying to get into the top 20 here and both in conferences that are not, not power five conferences. I, I had a couple of ideas uh, coming on you two that, that I wanted to throw at you, but it's, uh, it's interesting for our viewers to know that you two are from schools that are distinctly different in a couple of ways. Uh, Molly, your school is a basketball football school, um, but better known for the big O and Jordan Thompson, uh, I, I think. And uh, uh, I'm an Indiana high school basketball person, so that's how I know big O went to school there, Oscar Robinson. Uh, Tim, you're a, you're a basketball school, basically. Uh, uh, and I looked at your conferences and I figured out in my own mind that I've got this all solved for you. Uh, I, I really think uh, to, to get going here, Tim, you need to get in with Gonzaga and that group, or you need to go with Creighton and Marquette and that group, since ESPN is locating all the schools for the, the most uh, uh, possible, good possible production in, uh, in making money in college sports. And Molly, I like the idea of about uh, five or six year schools going with the big 12 and being immediately power five so that you don't have to be power six. But that wasn't what I was going to ask you. Bob's going to ask you about that stuff down the road. I, I want to know both of you have been assistant coaches before for 13 years each. 
Uh, Tim, you were with uh, uh, Nina Matthews at uh, Pepperdine, uh, uh, who not only coached indoor, but beach. And uh, Molly, you had the distinction of being with Bob Bertucci uh, in one of your uh, stays out at Temple. Uh, that will be interesting to hear about that. But uh, both of you had 13 years experience as assistant coaches. So let me ask you, what does it take to be a good assistant coach? And, and what do you look for in assistant coaches? Because uh, I had a chance to work with Tim for nine years. And uh, uh, I know the coaches that have worked uh, that had you in their programs, Molly speak extremely highly of you. So how, how do you now turn that around? And uh, what do you look for when you hire assistant coaches? Yeah, I, you know, immediately it's work ethic. Um, I think having someone understand um, the grind that it takes at this level is no question. Loyalty is probably um, evenly um, equal with work um, because the, the loyalty is everything. We don't work a normal, as you all know, it's not a normal schedule. It's not a normal life. It's all intrusive. Your home life is your work life. Your work life is your home life. We don't shut our phones off at any time. And so the people that are close to you, um, you really, they're, they're in, they're in it. And so the loyalty I think is really essential. And the third piece is, um, as to be a really great assistant, your main role is to uphold the head coaches philosophy culture and to make the, to be the bridge between the players and the head coach, not for yourself, but for the head coach, your job is to make the head coach successful your job is to help the players understand that it's the head coach's program and here's the philosophy and here's um, the culture that they expect. And whether you might agree with a starting lineup or disagree with the starting lineup or agree with a practice plan or disagree with a practice plan, it doesn't matter when you leave the room as coaches, um, you, you're 100% in support of the head coach and you make sure that the players um, understand that. I think that's critical to a program success. Kim, can you add to that? Uh, or if you don't agree, can you, uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think loyalty is huge. Um, the, the one thing I have learned that when hiring staff is that you try and find a balance. I don't want people just like me. And I certainly don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Uh, so I try and hire to my blind spots uh, with people that are going to be loyal to me uh, and our, our staff and our, our university. And I, I think that's a really big deal. Um, you know, every, every staff has different ways they do things. Every coach has different, you know, trends or philosophies. And, you know, the, everyone's got to understand the hierarchy. At the end of the day, the head coach is the final say, but I want people who are going to challenge me in rooms with scouting reports and ideas and training ideas so that they fill out my blind spots because no one's perfect. You know, I still learn stuff every day. Uh, so I think that's a big piece of it. So one last thing very quickly, because we've got other coaches want to ask you questions about other things. Uh, both of you put in 13 years as assistants before you got your first head coaching assignments. Um, do you feel that's about the right time to be an assistant or does uh, time not matter? Um, or was there just a, that's the way it worked out for each of you. Uh, Molly, you want to start with that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um... I'm actually flipped. I was 13 years head coach. Oh, so sorry. I spent, that's okay. I spent um, three years because I think this will answer it in a different way than, than, but help with, to your question, it will help with the question too. I spent three years with um, Bob at Temple before I took my first head coaching job at um, University of Southern Indiana, which is a division two school and uh, in a fantastic volleyball program. It's just a really great program, good history. Um, and I certainly didn't know anything, you know, um, and that's okay. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Cause I learned a lot from that too, from that experience and then left, um, university of Southern Indiana and went to Ole Miss as an assistant coach for five years before I left for Houston. So, um, I, I think, you know, I learned so much with my experience at temple, but then even shifting into a head coach, going back to an assistant coach. I think um, a little bit to build on what Tim said, you always have to, no matter what role you're in, of always being open to learning and that knowing that the game is always evolving. The players that we get are always evolving. Our teams are different from year to year um, and being able to learn. So I think in every experience that I've had, um, I've learned a ton. And that's something I have to remind myself now, this is my 10th year at UC, um, to keep 
knowing and staying fresh that there's always room to grow. So um, a lot of different experiences that have helped me where I am now. So, so Tim, you were a head, head coach of boys high school, head coach of girls club before you became an assistant. Uh, um, what's your thought about that? You know, for me, it, it was just the timing and kind of how it worked out. I felt at all my stops at Pepperdine. Uh, and then when I left to join your staff uh, and that, that run we had, I just, I felt like I had more to do or, or still more to learn. And so I, I, I really enjoyed where I was at. Um, and I didn't feel, I didn't have this burning need to be like, I have to be the first chair. You know, I didn't need to move that one chair to the right. Uh, I, di I just didn't have that burning urge. Uh, and then I think, Finally, towards the end of that run, I felt like I was ready. I think everyone's different. I just knew, unfortunately, with you around so much, I realized how much I didn't know. Um, you know? <laughs> but uh, I just felt like uh, I finally had a good enough grasp and we had accomplished some of the goals that when I joined your staff initially that I wanted to accomplish. Um, and so I, for me, it was, it was just the timing of it kind of felt right. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I could have left early, you know, after two or three years with you and felt like I, a, I had accomplished what I wanted to accomplish at USC and B, like I said, just having you in the room every day, I kept feeling like I had so much more to learn. Well, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Bob Bertucci has got some really good questions here because he wants to talk about uh, uh, you guys going now being head coaches and going forward and in conferences uh, trying to get in the top 20. Bob, what do you got for us? Well, I'm going I'm to start with Molly. Uh, you know, Molly, you hear about the Power Five, as Ruth mentioned when she first came on, uh, introducing the show. Uh, and but but I've heard the AAC talking about the Power Six. You know, I don't know if that's something that's just happening with with coaches in in that in that conference that they talk about it. Or, uh, you know, are, are you really thinking that that your conference is that next conference that's going to make that jump uh, to that power five? Or, or do, you, do you see possibly that that conference splitting up? I mean, Cincinnati could go anywhere. They could go to the I mean, they're like in the middle of the country. I mean, they could go any any one of these conferences, maybe even geographically better than where they are right now. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Right. You know, I been through this the conference thing um a lot it, when i was at houston it happened there too and i've definitely learned to just wait until they tell you what happens because <laughs> no matter what you guess you think you can say that it pivots and changes by the hour sometimes so um it's easy to get caught up in it until um they tell me what we're doing um it, it's hard to listen to any of it you know i think um Cincinnati's been in the conversation even before I got here as far as just TV network and um, the amount of uh, viewers that we have as a city and the potential there. And then obviously, you know, a lot of this is predicated on football. I mean, that's the number one source because it's about money and our football program is, is certainly um, been tremendous. And even, you know, you look at the head coach is, um, is just a huge asset for us. And then of course, men's basketball is next. So I don't know, you know, certainly um, we're a proud member of the American and when all the things fall into their spots, then we'll know. It's hard to answer or even guess because there's so many moving parts to it. You know, I think it was interesting that we heard a lot about it near the end of the summer. And then, you know, it's, it's you know, crickets now, you, you know, you don't hear anything. So right. have you heard anything as being part of one of those schools that, that are always being talked about uh or do you just kind of shut that down and don't pay any attention to it you know i try to shut it down because like i said it's not it's not worth getting into it because it does change so much i mean you know it's even down to um you know our our political figures get involved with that our state representatives and stuff in general anybody that's involved with it um, and you know, I, I have heard, you'll hear people say, Hey, when it's crickets and that means something's going on. So I don't know, maybe something, <laughs> maybe something is now stirring. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, how, how do you think it affects the players and how does it affect you recruiting? I mean, you, you gotta be thinking of it from that standpoint. Yeah, it, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a recruiting, um, you know, piece it's big in that. And I think what, you know, what I've tried 
tried to how I've tried to position our program and what we've done as a staff is we're going to schedule um, around that. So in order to be, you know, the best and be in the top, you got to play the best. So that's how I schedule every year. So if recruits want to get into a discussion about conference or, um, you know, perceptions of it, then I say, Hey, look at our schedule. So if you want to play the best, come here, we're going to play the best. We're going to put ourselves in position to be a top 25 program. And that's how um, we attack that conversation. We also show our conference RPI because from year to year, we're anywhere six, seven in the country and sometimes above some of those power five conferences. So we use the conference RPI too to showcase what all of our teams are doing. Cause I think that's how you get better too. You, you the teams together in the conference have to work to elevate perception um, where you are as a conference, what everybody's doing scheduling, you know, and then who can pick up those matches and win some of them too. It's about winning. So I think we can help each other as conference members to, um, to showcase, you know, how talented we are. Well, ha does the AAC have any, any strategy for, for their, you know, uh, scheduling with, you know, with the RPI because, or, or at least voting, yeah, because uh, I don't believe anybody uh, in your conference got ranked as one of the top 25. Uh, right. So is everybody just fending for themselves or have you guys got a strategy here? Um, I think we have a scheduling philosophy that um, is similar to some other conferences around the country that we put together as, um, you know, some subcommittees as coaches. I think we can get better at that. You know, how do you um, maybe doing more evaluation at the end of the year? What worked? What didn't? How can we get better at? It's scheduling. So I think as a conference, we can always grow and be better in that sense. So we do have a, a philosophy that I think um, can help us for sure. Yeah. Well, let me jump to Tim for a second. Uh, you know, Tim, we want to examine the WAC, but since we're talking about, you know, RPI and scheduling strategies, uh, you know, how do you, what, what's your philosophy on it? I mean, I, I don't, I don't believe your schedule shows that you're playing you know, USC and UCLA and, and, or Penn State. I mean, so how, how do you feel about it? And what's, what's the, the WAC doing in that regard? Yeah, a couple things. Well, so the, the WAC just expanded this year. It's our first year. We added uh, a bunch of schools that used to be in the old Southland Conference, uh, notably Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State. Uh, which is going to help bolster our RPI. Um, we're now in division, so we don't play everyone in the whole league. Uh, so we ended up playing what we call pods. So we're going to cross over. So we have all the teams that were last year in the top 100 RPI playing one pod as the crossover. So that includes ourselves, New Mexico State, Utah Valley, uh, Stephen F. Austin, and Sam Houston. And so we'll play across divisions with each other. And then we have the middle group, and then we have the lower group. And by doing that, we think that we can help pull the entire conference RPI up. So because you have the top schools all playing the top schools. Uh, so we're not going to drop our RPI because we're crossing over and playing the lower end of that division. Uh, but the, the other part about it, quite honestly, is I think the RPI is flawed. I mean, it's, you know, I, I could play SC, Penn State, Stanford. But then when I play my conference schedule, I'm going to get penalized because I have to play teams in my league. So for me... We're scheduling A to hit recruiting grounds uh, because at the end of the day, it's about winning matches, winning conference tournament, getting into the NC2A tournament and winning matches. So a big piece of our scheduling is going to areas of the country that we have traction recruiting uh, and playing in front of those crowds and showing them our brand of volleyball. Uh, you know, I think we play good volleyball. I think, you know, if you look at some of our matches over the weekend, we're super young. We start two true freshmen. We only have one senior uh, that's, able to play this year at all uh and yet we're still able to you know we had a couple sets where we're hitting you know 15 for 32 with no hitting errors uh so we're developing our brand of volleyball and we want to make sure we're showcasing that in the in the areas that we're recruiting from uh, the other part of it too is i have a heck of a time getting people to come play us uh you know we're, we're having to pay out bigger and big, bigger guarantees just to get matches at home a lot of people play me at their place nobody's going to play me at my place yeah, it sounds like you're in that in that in between spot where where you nobody wants to take the chance of playing you at home. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go to Brian and maybe he can pick up a little bit on on the conference because we want to talk a little bit more about the conference and he's uh, even more familiar with the WAC than I am. 
Uh, and then he'll he'll want to talk to Molly also about her team a little bit. So Brian, why don't you go ahead and ask some of your questions? I I don't know anything about the WAC. It changes every <laughs> week. <laughs> I, I think uh, you know. Can you can you name the teams, Tim, in the WAC? I, I don't. It goes on uh, all the time. By the way, I just wanted to say that after 32 years of not being in a Power Five uh, conference, I didn't care. Your job is to out train, out practice, and when the ball goes up, you got a better, you got as equal opportunity to score every time the ball goes up. So I didn't really care. The power Power Five conference is trying to put you in your place. Don't listen. You know they're they're telling you, you know, this is how you this know your place. You're not in the fraternity of schools, so yeah, the hell with that. You know, don't <laughs> put that. You know, you go. Like you guys it. are both good. You're both good. You're you're excellent. You're experienced. You put produce great players. Uh, the heck with that. So, but anyway, hit a no, nerve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the heck with that. And by the way, Tim, I do want to respond. And Mick knows about this. Is one year um, we went down 10, 10 uh, RPI positions, ten by winning th eight matches three zero. We kept going, getting worse. And yeah, how dare you? They were, in, they were in our conference and they were bad teams. Yeah, I, the RPI is more than flawed. I yeah. used to say, can we forfeit those games? <laughs> you know, <laughs> will they not count? You know, um, anyway, I, you know, Molly, I wanted to, I, you, how old are your children? Five, three, and one. Yeah, I, I, this is not one of our questions that was scheduled, but can you respond to, to women or thinking about going in the sport and being a mom and managing that. Can you say yeah. something about that? Um, that's a great question for this time frame right now because boy, we are in the thick of it. And uh, it's definitely challenging. And I think, you know, I'm lucky that I coach with my husband and I often think if I didn't, what would that look like? And I think the support system around it is critical. And it's not, it's support from your university is one piece, but um, to have support from your partner is essential um, it, because it's difficult. It's certainly challenging. And um, I think if, you know, I, I have a spouse, so that's, that works with me. So there's a different level of trust as far as training. And if there's times that I have to be away, so it would be the spouse support. And then also going back to the assistant coaching that um, Tim and I both talked about before of having the right people in place because you are going to be pulled in both directions. It's just inevitable. You will be. Is he the one that's usually wrong? Is he the one that makes all the <laughs> Tim, let's talk a little bit about your team uh, itself. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about your team this upcoming season and let everybody know. Yeah, um, you know, we have uh, the returning setter of the year in the conference and Claire Mitchell. Uh, we run a real fast tempo. I, I think we're the best serve and pass team hands down. Uh, and we're constantly work on getting just a little bit bigger on the pin. Uh, you know, we're starting a true freshman left and a true freshman right. Uh, my freshman left hit 305 on the weekend and was the, the Western Athletic Freshman of the Week. Uh, my freshman right, I think she hit 290. Uh, I'm a second on our team in points. So we're figuring it out. You know, our brand of volleyball is we're going to put it a lot of pressure from the service line. Uh, and, you know, uh, Tegan DeFalco uh, is, is our senior libero, and I think she had seven aces in one match this weekend. Oh, yeah. Really able to put pressure on people, uh, and and we like to run fast. Um, and and I think we defend really well. You know, Mick just always beating me. You get defense wins championships, so we spend a lot of time defending the ball and and working on transition offense. Yeah, the game is game is played way above the net and one just before the floor, right? Just before, yeah. That's absolutely right. And Molly, let, what about your team? Um, we're pretty young as well. I think we have um, some young emerging bodies that are really talented. We had a middle, middle blocker um, from just outside of Columbus, Abby Walker, that is just an unbelievable athlete. I mean, she is dominating at the net and um, I think just really great composure. You know, it's hard to come in as a freshman and perform right away. Even the ones that we know are really talented, you really don't know until you get them there and put them um, up in front of competition. And we played 
Um, a very good Dayton team this weekend, a Texas State team that's getting top 25 votes, and then the reigning champ, which was not on purpose, in Kentucky. Um, they <laughs> they won that national championship after we finished the schedule, but I have no, I have no problem playing them. But I, to think a freshman like that and put them um, in the face of those three teams is really unbelievable. We have returning outside Maria Mallon from Michigan that's just a stud, and she's a 5'8 stud. Um, so like you said, the, you know, it's played way, way above the net, but before the, the ball hits the ground, it's one and her ball control is what makes her fantastic. She can score points and has a heavy arm, but she really has the ability to ball control and keep us in system. And, um, overall in the middle, we just, we have a ton of arms. I, I think our depth this year is more than we've, we've ever had. So it's fun, um, but challenging because it makes for tough decisions, you know, so we're talking to them on a daily basis of, you have to be the ones to tell us and force us to put your name on that lineup because at any given moment, we have some, some talented bodies out there. You know, uh, the good news is they're freshmen. The bad news is they're freshmen. <laughs> Jim, please say hello to Claire for me. I love the girl. Um, good luck both of you uh, for the season. It's nice to see teams on the rise and I'm turning it over to Ruth. Okay, Thanks, again, these three guys, the Here we go. Here. One minute. Gonna listen you to wasted minute. all your time <laughs> complaining. Bob, Get to it. Hey, you want me to put you on mute? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to ask my questions because we're going to keep these guys on as we go into our commercial break a little early and then we'll jump back on. So if uh, Tim and Molly have agreed to stay on, I'm going to jump into our normal and then I'll start out with my first question. And it's always best to be the first person, to ask the question, not the last. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hall of Famers with years of success bring you drills across all positions, teaching keys for all ages and ability, offensive and defensive strategies. Take advantage of the Master Coaches Stream 18 full length on demand video series by heading over to our Instagram, VB Master Coaches, on our website, volleyballmastercoaches.com, and you can register for all 18 video training packages hosted by Coaches Insider. You missed one of our shows, jump over to Instagram and click on our YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Volleyball Master Coaches, Instagram and Twitter, VB Master Coaches. A special shout out to all of those over 88 guests and now have reached up to almost 100, including some that have come on twice. And we want to make a special thank you to Bodden Sports SNA. Want to make a difference? Please remember to renew your ABCA membership. This one organization that represents all coaches at all levels when lobbying for changes that are needed in our sport. And you can make a difference by registering abca.org. Stay on Facebook Live after John closes today and we'll hear master coaches. We're gonna continue our conversation with our extended buzz. Now let's go to our buzz and buzz reaction digital partner, Dr. John Foreman, who will update us on his most recent project. Oh, thanks, Ruth. Uh, most recent project is getting through preseason, and hopefully now that things have normalized and we're in the regular season, I can get some editing work done on the Wizard Wizard Women edition of the Volleyball Coaching Wizard series. So with that, hopefully everything is going to transition smoothly, and we'll be able to carry on. All right. For those joining us for Buzz Reaction for the first time, today we will begin an extended buzz due to Bob, Brian, and Mick talking almost the whole time, and I get to ask my first question on the Buzz Reaction. Well, so, well before you do that, Ruth, I want you to see that my, my background's been switched to Buzz Reaction. I, you know I'm what? I'm the only one that did that. Well, you know what? You should get, I'll, I, you know what? You'll get a positive reinforcement from me by me giving you a buzz reaction tap. Okay, there's your tap. Okay. All right. Now, now I ask you a question. Ruth, Ruth, have you ever had an extended buzz reaction? Hey, listen, you know what? This is an extended buzz reaction every Monday when we meet, the three of you and me. All right, so Tim, Molly, let's get you back in this. Molly is just having a hoot. All right, I have to go back and I have to say this. First of all, Tim, you survived Mick. And Molly, <laughs> you survived Bob. And now you have to survive the NIL. 
So please, let's go first to Tim, since you responded first that you could stay on a little more. What is your feeling about NIL with 18 companies? You've got everybody trying to do all this at all levels. What's your reaction to this and how engaged are you and your school in this? Well, first off, I'd like you to know there is a club of distinguished people who have worked for Mick who all like to say we all survived. Okay. Uh, we, know the feel, we know the feeling now. We're starting to understand. This. Yeah, you guys are starting to appreciate how resilient I am now. Okay, I uh, raised my thumb and my screen for that. Um, but in, in terms of NIL, I think, uh, you know, our university is certainly looking at it. I think that it is an unprecedented time for student athletes. Um, you know, and I don't know that it's going to be uh, as lucrative as some people think. And I think there'll be some, you know, I think volleyball players will have opportunities for sure. Um, you know, I know there are, you know, companies coming forward, trying to reach out um, and, and connect with athletes and figure out ways. And the athletes are certainly trying to figure out ways to monetize it. Um, some have no interest, some that's all they want to talk about. So I think that you know, our university is doing a good job. We have hired kind of a, a firm that's going to help our athletes when they get to that point of negotiating and making sure, A, they stay within the rules because there still are rules. Um, you know, there actually has to be a service provided that the athlete gives to receive that compensation. Um, so I, I think, you know, GCU is kind of on the forefront of that. And they've done all sorts of education for athletes. They've put on seminars, brought in speakers, trying to help our athletes put their best foot forward and showcase themselves. Mm -hmm. what it's going to look like I don't know you know we're all kind of waiting to see how it, it shapes and morphs and shifts I think we'll know honestly a lot more in the next six months okay what do you, what do you feel your role is in this how yeah, I, I think my role is is to a help educate my athletes okay. um and, and make sure if before they get into a partnership uh, that, that they're using me as a sounding board and a resource. And hey, what is that going to look for you like in 10 years? What's that going to look like on your resume? You know, is, is that something that you really want to build and pursue? Or hey, you know, that is a great opportunity. Maybe you can tie it into this. Uh, and so we have a, a panel at GCU that can help with that along obviously with my staff. Um, and I think it's my job to help my athletes. Um, I, I do. And I think it's the athlete's job to, to make sure that their NIL pursuits are not taking away from, from the team and the team's effort. Okay, so the last part of that would be, do you have players right now that are engaged in agreements already and doing their NIL with companies? Uh, no formal agreements yet. We have players that are in negotiations. Okay, all right, that's excellent. Okay, Molly. Um, I think our... I agree. I don't know what it's going to look like. I think there's so many different forms. I immediately saw it as being more influencers type social media influencers um, for the, for the mass majorities. I think there's going to be a very small percentage that are going to make um, a ton of, ton of money. Um, so influencers, and I thought more of like camps, clinics, like they don't have to go through um, a whole process with the universities to worry about camps and clinics. So that's what I saw immediately. Um, we also hi we hired a company endorsed to work um, with our department and have done a ton of education. I think my only fear too would just be locking themselves into some sort of contractual commitment that they don't understand by just trying to hurry up and do something mm -hmm. to jump on the bandwagon. So um, I really have worked to try to prevent that. Don't want them to um, take away from what maybe they could earn by getting into a bad contract. And I think too, I'm not sure, I think we have to continue to educate too on, hey, you know, you're, this isn't just a making money, you're going to have to open your own LLC, you're going to have to pay taxes, you're going to have to, you know, there's a whole nother side to it, it's not just Thank about you. making money, right, and we all know that athletes at this age to any, any student at this age, you know, we see right in front of them, and this far side to side, so just helping them see bigger picture, and if they are going to do it, to take advantage of it in the right way, but I think it's great that they have these opportunities to do it. Okay, for you, do you have any players that are right now that are uh, have NILs with this one? We do, uh, and they've ranged um, from, you know, anyone that uses this code, um, you get a kickback on the code. So maybe it's just sharing it with family and friends, things like that. Some that have received product to be able to share the product. So it's kind of all different um, range. So nothing that's really been like team-wise across the board locally that people can go eat at the barbecue place if they do this, this, and this. 
not that I, mm -mm. Not yet. okay, yeah. well, that's good. All right, so the last, last question I have, and since I get to ask the first one, is tell me, what is the most rememberable thing that you received from Mick and Bob that has helped you become much more successful as a head coach? Oh boy, you're gonna have to think. You should we come back tomorrow? No. Uh, no, I'm just already... trying to think of how much I want to throw Mick to the wolves here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They they they're getting this. That's why I'm asking this question. Um, for me, I think, you know, having two mentors, you know, Mick and Nina that saw the game so differently, uh, I got to kind of take what I like from both and, and try and make the game my own. Um, you know, Mick was so stat based on his, you know, with his international experience and his Olympic experience, uh, and just really teaching me how to, how to break the game down in, in you know, with data volume, data project and the numbers and, and to use those to guide you that, you can't always just rely on your gut feeling because your gut can lie to you. You know, you get caught up in the moment and you think player X is just, she's really not doing it well. And you look at the stats and like, oh, she's actually hitting 350. She just hit that one ball out. Uh -huh. um, so I, I think that's part of it. And the other part of it that, that Mick, I think really hit home for me that we do with, in our staff is being a forward thinker and planning out. You know, we have our schedule planned out through the spring already and our recruiting trips. And, and you know, we're looking... 16 to 18 months down the line where we want to be and what we want to be doing. And then we work backwards to make sure we're doing the things we have to do to get there, you know, kind of reverse engineering it, but just looking so far forward. And, you know, I really didn't like him for that during COVID when I had to throw that entire thing away and start over. Um, but it is, I think it's the best way to do it. It's kept us ahead in the recruiting game where we're out recruiting some power fives for kids. It's kept us, you know, ahead on our training phase, making sure we're getting to where we want to get to on time to, to give ourselves the best chance to win. Okay. The second part of it, what was the funniest thing that ever happened when you were on his coaching staff that you can tell live? All right. Well, we were in practice at Galen. Uh, this must've been 2012. Uh, we were, we were pretty good that year. We lost in the regional final. But we were having a practice and Natalie Haglin was there. You know, she was our All-American libero. And, and Mick was kind of chewing on the A side because we'd given up two aces in a row and serve receive. And he was walking backwards, you know, waving his hands like this. And he stepped on a ball and fell flat on his back and continued to yell from the ground. And Haglin looked at me and just lost it just lost it and mick is still laying into him we've got to move our feet we've got to you know push and rebalance from flat on his back and finally he looked over and he saw the entire gym was doubled over laughing and he started laughing <laughs> okay that's good molly you had to have been thinking you gotta okay tell us the most important things that you learned from bob and then we're going to go to the funny story okay um all right very good the most because I learned a lot. I mean, I was young um, and immediately went to Bob, but I think um, discipline, I, I learned a lot of. For Bob, it was very simple. Things were, volleyball-wise, were black and white. You play the game the right way. And I know everyone has different systems, but for what the system was for Temple, um, you play the game the right way. And it, it, it made volleyball very simple for me. I understood it, and I understood the discipline part. It, I connected and resonated um, with me um really well so i i appreciated that and i think um it held athletes accountable right it's very clear you knew what you had to do in this role um so I, I think that was huge and bob has this way too of like i you know as i was a graduate assistant but taking on the the second assistant role so um i might have been slightly over my 20 hours per week uh, but all of a sudden I would be doing things and thinking, how the hell am I doing this? Like Bob had a way of talking you into things where he wasn't really asking you something. He yes. made it sound like he was asking you, but you had to commit to it. Like you had no choice. <laughs> and we like, know that for sure. <laughs> how did this happen? I absolutely do not want to do this, but I don't really think that I had a choice. So <laughs> That was, um, I try to work that where I can with other staff members, but I'm definitely not as good as it, at it as he is <laughs> at all. 
Yeah, I think so too got a gift for that. I mean, Nick talked me into a midweek flight to Turkey before a match to come back and go straight to the match because it was just a good idea. Right. And in the moment you're in it, right? And then afterwards you're like, no way. What was I thinking? How did he talk me into this? Right. So Molly, that's your funny story or that's the truth? That's the truth. (laughs) Oh, I thought that was the funny story. Oh my gosh, that's the truth. Okay, what's your funny story? I can still have nightmares about those things. (sighs) Bob's calling. (laughs) That's a good thing. It made me a good coach. All right, what's the funny thing that you remember? One of them. No, I have to, we had more like funny experiences together because our staff was good. And um, I think I can tell this story because he's no longer in coaching. He hasn't been coaching in a long time, but um, our other assistant coach, unbelievable player, person, great heart, like just a really great guy. But I'll tell you what, the, um, we should have written a book <laughs> while he was with us on the staff. So one, one trip we go away and I don't know, like I often look back and think, oh my gosh, if I were in Bob's shoes, how did he do this? So Bob, I, I scheduled the hotel. So Bob always wanted, Hey, listen, it has to have steam room or sauna. Like don't, one of those things, like, don't even come ask me steam room or sauna. It's got to have it. So we go to, uh, I think this one was a sauna we go to it and there's a up front and our assistant coach walks in with like European swimsuit, you know, of what we thought. You're like, wow, that's a very large human being and some little buns. <laughs> so you don't think anything of it, but he, he then proceeds to tell us that he accidentally picked up the wrong bottoms and they were his wife's bottoms. <laughs> and I am like, I couldn't believe it. And Bob, it doesn't even phase him. This is one of many stories. Doesn't even phase him. He's like, oh, okay. You know, and he moves on and I'm thinking, oh, there's this six eleven man in a pair of women's bottoms and Bob just lets it roll right off and keeps moving. And I think I don't even know what I would do in that situation. And there were countless situations like that, but he was fantastic with it. And we laugh about it now. And that assistant coach left as well. So you remember that, Bob. Oh, I do. <laughs> okay, so we have it. I ha- that picture is, is just burned into my memory. <laughs> okay, so Brian, since you didn't get to be engaged and be roasted by these two, what's your last, we have uh, a couple more minutes. These guys have committed these extra minutes for us. You have anything you want to talk to Tim and Molly? No, oh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just listening. <laughs> I just want you to know that none of my assistants have any stories like He's that. He's speechless oh, is what he is. No, we <laughs> know that. Nothing, nothing I ever did embarrassing, oh. uh, that it was embarrassing, and nothing I ever did was uh, was out of the ordinary. I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Molly, you and Tim, you have your last, there's last two minutes on the show. You can ask anyone anything. You each will get a minute. Wow. And they have to answer. Now, I didn't yes, say how they yes answer. Yes or no. Yes or no yeah, question. Yes, no, yes or no. Okay. <laughs> Molly, let's go to you first. Okay. So I think, and so Nick, this, this will be for you because I think this is, um, you know, everyone talks about, oh, a different generation, different generation of player. But that, that could be said for however many years over the years, right? The, the, I think that's always something that's changing, evolving, whatever. So we deal with our, you know, as coaches across the board, not volleyball coaches, but coaches across the country with a lot of anxiety, um, depression, fear of not being perfect, you know, all these extra add-ons that they have. How, how would you coach today's athlete to get them to perform the way they need to perform, right? Because I think of even my experience with Bob, like I said, it's very direct. This is what you need to do. This is what you don't need to do. But how do you coach today's athlete knowing that there's all those extra components to it, because I do think it has shifted. Well, I think the one thing that seems obvious to me is you can't use the word no ever. (laughs) (laughs) You have to figure out how to talk around things because if you use the simple, no, we are not doing that, or you cannot do that. uh, It just uh, explodes on you. I've never seen anything like it with these, these younger kids, uh, how they they don't handle that well, you know, uh, 
when we grew up, we used to get that regularly. So it, it right. didn't matter. But these kids don't hear the word no. So you really have to have uh, your communication skills have to be extremely good. Uh, you have to be able to communicate in a way that you let them know you've heard what they said. And then you try to let them know what you think is the, the best answer to that uh, situation. Okay, Tim. All right, Brian, how do we fix the RPI? Oh, <laughs> well, they, they have to uh, clearly eliminate um, you. If you win a mandatory match, that has to be eliminated. If you lose a mandatory match, then it has to be counted. But it can't count uh, a mandatory match that takes your numbers down that you win 3 0 ha cannot, cannot uh, affect you negatively. Otherwise, it's certain conferences are always going to be higher than you, and it's and it's not fair. It you could be you could be the best team in the nation and play the conference you both play, and end up not even in the top twenty-five in your RPI by winning. So yeah. that has to be adjusted. That would be my 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 adjustment. That's all. What do you think, Tim, real quick, if we have time, Ruth, the 50% 50 50 of your of your RPI is your opponent's win percentage? I mean, is that, do you think you should get more points for your own wins? I don't know. I mean, I, the RPI is just ridiculous to me. I, I well, look, if, I, if I can add one more thing, there's a pretty good um, formula used for the chess players, worldwide chess players, and a pretty good formula used for these games. You know, the the gaming, the kids that play the games, not kids anymore, but those gaming industry, it's such, it's such a money-making thing and it's worldwide uh, rankings uh, that both of those do uh, have a better formula than the RPI. It needs to be investigated. Okay, so thank you, Molly and Tim for staying extra. Thanks, you guys. It was great to have you on. Great to see you and good luck this season. Yeah, same for me. And the last thing I would say is this. They are much better at responding on chat than the three master coaches that never respond, except Mick oh, once in a while. Did you want us to be on chat, Ruth? Yeah, Molly. <laughs> you know what I do when he does that? I just don't even act like I hear him. Hey, hey, I am impressed that he knows there's a chat on here. I, I am <laughs> I'm very impressed with that. Do not ask how many months. Uh, Please, not. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me i gotta get ready to head down okay. to practice but right. uh thanks tim you know, all right thanks bye tim. guys thank you right, bye, beat tim. some balls you guys all right. <laughs> bye molly bye, See bye. Ya, tim. <laughs> oh molly molly love oh it. man you got your hands full that's hilarious <laughs> oh, you we are already. Can't even Molly, she has three men to blame everything on so we're always no. wrong you know yeah <laughs> here's the one story that i didn't want to tell because this is a true man oh, thing. Wait a second. Are we're, you? On live. we're on live oh oh we can't okay well <laughs> right. no, no 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 we're on live yeah all right can't tell about bob yeah. Oh, yeah. Send that one out after though. Send it out. We need it. It's an it's a good it's a nice one. I just, you know, I, I just uh we'll save it though for us for our group. Okay. <laughs> this was great. Thank you all very much. It was yeah. awesome. All right, Molly. Great, all right, great, have great tournament afternoon. last weekend. You guys looked really good. Nice battle. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, take care. All, all right. right. Bye. bye bye. All right, you guys were just fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely fabulous hey hey do you believe nolan was on the balcony of a building no and, and looking up because his head was back like this all the time i thought he's going to fall off that building into in the city of phoenix uh i can't figure what angle he was <laughs> at that at. i was just about i didn't want to say anything i thought you might have said something because you're you know him a little better than i do now i would have said something to molly but <laughs> Well, I, I could have said, hey, be careful. You don't fall off that balcony. <laughs> then you would have really started Bob and Brian and they would have really started going. Oh, but yeah. it was it was great. What a um, what a good co collection of both of them, exactly opposite. And it's interesting that uh, his West and his Southwest divisions, because I looked through those today. 
And I think there's like, uh, there's seven in each one, I believe. Yeah. And they play only in their pods, kind of like the ACC did during the springtime. Yeah. Well, you know, here's, here's the problem for the way this is working. These schools, like Tim's schools, are basketball schools, uh -huh. okay? They're not engaged in football. So they're trying to get into that NC2A basketball tournament. That's where they're going to make their money. And their volleyball programs need to carry them. They're basketball volleyball schools, if you want to know the truth. If you look at the WAC, those, those the, not the WAC, the, um, the WCC, the, the conference I was telling him, I thought that they ought to be in a, as a basketball school. That is a volleyball basketball conference. And, and that's really cool to be in that kind of a situation or in the Big East, which is a volleyball basketball conference because you've got Creighton, Marquette, Nova, St. John's. They're all, all UConn. School, yeah. And they're all playing volleyball at a high level and they're all trying to get into the men's basketball tournament. So those are those are conferences that shouldn't be left out just because they're not in the power five football deal and brian's right you don't need to be power five to win national championships he can he can attest to that by physically have done it two or three times um on the other hand cincinnati is a great school to get into your conference if you're a football power and acc or the aac and the Big 12 are now kind of power six conferences because they've lost, a, the Big 12 has lost Oklahoma and Texas for the most part. But I could see those schools picking up the city of Cincinnati, the city of Houston, the city of Memphis, the city of Orlando uh, with UCF, the city of Tampa with uh, South Florida. You add those cities to the big 12 and you increase that to 16 and you go 14 pods, you've got a heck of a conference. You could rework the pods uh, as Nolan's conference did for the power teams in one pod. You could do all kinds of different things and the football would have a better chance of getting into the playoff system. So uh, I think both of them would be better uh, either the AAC has to absorb some some more teams or they have to split and and their their highest uh, visible teams with good football have to go into the big 12 uh if they can stay together or something like that uh espn is responsible for all of this in my opinion they, they literally screwed the 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 pooch on this by uh by getting oklahoma and texas to jump from the big 12 to the sec Hey, I would, before we close out, I really would like to uh, jump to our new Stream 18 full length series uh, video program and just wanted some of your feedback from you guys for the viewers. Well, eventually this is going to be on our website, correct? Yes. Actually, you can jump over to the website, but just talk about some of the things that are in this. We have a few more minutes left. Well, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And I think it's been really well done because you can jump on a two, two minute, three minute, four minute program here, and you can get about six important things to teach. I, I, I thought it was uh, one of the best done. And, you know, for this day and age, people don't want to spend 20, 30 minutes watching something in two to four minutes, you can get the key things that you, to take back to your practice or to work with a kid on, I think it's a great program. Okay, Bob or Brian? Well, as long as we're we're on it, it's got to be good, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd say, I, 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 that was a great endorsement since it's the four of us. I think. Uh, thumbs up. Okay, you got another. I think uh, up. Brian and Ruth and Bob and Mick are great, and they should all get in. Everybody should be involved. <laughs> well, Bob, uh, your kind of feedback on it? Well, I think I, I think the on the graphic you have there, Ruth, you kind of really explain the, the most important things. The key words, I think, are real critical to give a, a coach, you know, some, you know, the most important things to, to address in, in, in the skill. You know, drill development, we, 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 we show a lot of different drills for teaching. All right. We're covering all the skills. Uh, yeah, you know, I think your graphic kind of, you know, explains it right there. Um, you know, and I, I think that's what's really important. 
you know, in, in, uh, in that whole series. I, I think the information is good for beginning coaches, advanced coaches, you know, any level. I think it's, it, the, there's so much information there that everybody would benefit, you know. If they spend a year you, using all this information, that's all they would need for a year. And then we'll do new ones and, uh, and they can do, get involved next year. But there's an incredible amount of information. Well, I think it addresses um, all those things that you guys have mentioned, but also for those that are in, um, you know, elementary school, uh, we had a session on BYOP. You got yes. to see 10 and under kids. Uh, we had some middle school kids. And I think, of course, the high school and the college. And then with the new series that you guys came up with in regards to the offensive and defensive programs and strategies and, and just the theory behind it and feedback from the crowd. I mean, I think that that's really important. And the fact is that it covered every single skill. And a lot of people still, just like what they said in Abilene, we want to know how to teach the skill. You know, it's, it's funny as how, how do you unteach someone who's been doing it for seven years? Maybe that's a big question. Mixed Interesting up. stuff for sure. Hey, Ruth, before we close though, you never answered my question. Which one? The Have one, the one where you were talking about the extended buzz. Uh, I, I just wanted to know if you've ever, ever had an extended buzz. <laughs> I, I heard it, Mick. I heard it. I heard it too, and I said I've been extended buzz many times. But today, you had to check me on my feet because one, John Dick went off as host. We went on host ourselves. I didn't have internet connection problems. I had to change some graphics. I had to spotlight. And Bob is worried about being the number one to put buzz reaction background. And well, Mick's got it. And Brian, you haven't you haven't learned yet to do it. I th I just want everybody to know there's a com there's a complimentary segment going on between the all of us. That's all. Oh, that, that, that's good. hey, we were going to spend some time talking about assistant coaches, but I thought. Uh, Molly and, and here Seth you go. Billy. We have one minute left, and you're starting to talk. You yeah. almost did this last. You have 30 so, seconds. So give me a second to talk, will you? <laughs> no, no, I'll give you a 30 second filibuster. It's a filibuster. Well, I thought those guys really addressed the assistant position yeah. pretty well. Uh, I mean, yeah. we didn't need to spend 15 minutes talking about because I think they really, you know, hit on the most important points. You know, the work ethic, the loyalty. Uh, you know, I. I just think they did a great job with, 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 with some of those things. Yes. Okay. Well, our time is up and thanks for joining us today on buzz extended. And we, Bob is still doing buzz reaction for those coaches that are interested in our consulting services. Please go directly to our website, www.volleyballmastercoaches.com. Click on the contact form. And we look forward to customizing the in-person or virtual clinic for you. A very shout out, big shout out to those guests and viewers over the 67 weeks. 2021 ABCA Convention, Columbus, Ohio, December 15th. You can jump over to abcaconvention.org to register today. Be sure to tell your friends. If you guys have some friends, you should tell your friends on your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Master Coaches, to join us next week. And we will see you next week on The Buzz.